going on, guys? And welcome back to another episode of the German Bear Podcast. And today, we got the Mock Draft 1.0. It's finally time guys, I'm so excited for this video. This is my first mock draft of the 2023 draft season. The draft is coming up and tons of talented players already showed out at the Senior Bowl and the Shrine Bowl as well. And in today's episode, we want to look over the entire Bears draft pick in all seven rounds with trades included as well today. Obviously, we don't uh, just look at free agent moves in this episode as well. I'm thinking of a separate video where I do a mock off season included including a draft as well, because we obviously will add some players before the draft via free agency too. But today is all building through the draft, Ryan Paul's mentality nonetheless. And today we want to pick in, like I said, all the seven rounds. We got trades included today as well, and it should be a fire video. Finally got into some draft, pro uh, draft prospects, excuse me. Finally watched some of those guys that I'm going to talk about today as well. And I think overall, it was a pretty nice draft by the end of the day that could really help the Chicago Bears succeed in the future. So without further ado, let's get right into it and get started with the actual draft. And starting off the draft, we obviously know that the Chicago Bears have the number one overall draft pick. And I think for me overall, there's no question about it. You have to get trade down from that spot. It's way too of a it's way too much of a valuable pick for the Bears to be in. You got your franchise quarterbacks, you got tons of QB needy teams. But for me overall, there's only two spots that you really want to trade with, which is probably the Texans or the Colts at number four. And to start off this mock draft, we got an actual trade alert the Chicago Bears are receiving a call from the Indianapolis Coles for that number one overall pick and Ryan Poles pulls the trigger and actually gets a really good deal out of it the Colts get the number one overall pick from the Chicago Bears and the Bears in exchange get round one pick number four so move down a couple of spots then also round two pick number 35 round three pick number 79 and also next year's draft round one uh, the first round pick of the Colts in 2024 and their second round pick in 2024 now by reports uh, the price is pretty high for that number one overall pick and lots of teams are interested into it so it could be even higher of a price but I think that's a very big time value for the Bears still being in position for one of the two best defensive players in the draft and getting so much more capital to work with in the 2023 NFL draft and also in 2024 and now at the number fourth spot with the fourth overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft acquired from the Indianapolis Colts the Chicago Bears select Jalen Carter, defensive lineman out of Georgia. With Jalen Carter, the Chicago Bears absolutely won the draft already. You traded down to four, got tons of picks that you can work with, and you probably get the best player in the entire draft. I mean, six foot three, 310 pounds, and just a very limited and rare talent in the draft. It's a really good player, a three tech player, a interior defensive lineman that can actually rush the pass a passer. Excuse me, and Jalen Carter is absolutely excellent at it. Just a perfect fit for Matt Eberflus's defense. You get the best player at the number four spot. Like I said, what a steal. As for the pros for Jalen Carter overall, I mean, there's so many of it. He can line up at several spots for the defensive line, but I think he's really best suited at the three tech position for the Bears in the future. He has an amazing first step, really violent and quick hands. His swipe moves combined with his quickness are just absolutely nasty. He has a good variety of rush moves. He's really gap sound in the run defense as well. Has a strong core to take on even multiple blocks. I mean, he was really used to being double teamed a lot at Georgia because they basically double teamed him almost every single play and then also just shows effort even after the completion with running around and trying to make a tackle I mean overall what a amazing player Jalen Carter is I mean I can just remember a play against Tennessee where he just was basically triple team right he just beat uh, the guard first of all with a swim move then bull rushed the fullback who was trying to help the guard and then the running back was coming in as well but he just simply shoved him away 
I mean, also just absolutely dominated in the SEC championship game against LSU. I mean, overall, like I said, you get the best player at the four spot. You get additional draft capital. This would be the perfect outcome for the Bears to start off this draft. And you get an absolute home run hit with Jalen Carter at number four. Moving on to the second round for the Chicago Bears, we got once again a trade alert with the Carolina Panthers trying to move up. The Chicago Bears did receive pick number 35 from the Indianapolis Colts, but with so many holes on the team, they decide to trade down a bit again with the Carolina Panthers, who hold the number 39 overall pick in the second round. So the Panthers receive in that trade uh, in that trade round two pick number 35 and round four pick number 103 so you got a bit of a pick swap here for the Chicago Bears and the Bears uh, in exchange receive pick number 39 so move back four spots get pick number 93 in the third round and also pick number 114 in the fourth round and with that 39th overall pick in the 2023 NFL draft the Chicago Bears select Cody Mauk, interior offensive lineman, North Dakota State. At 6'4 and 305 pounds, Mauk was playing at left tackle at North Dakota State, but he's more projected as an interior offensive lineman in the NFL. But overall, for his pros, we started off with versatility. He played all positions at the Senior Bowl week and dominated at every single one of them. I mean, I'm with the scouts and with the expert here that he could potentially be more of an interior player due to his length and size, but overall he showed that he can play at every single spot and for the Bears it would be just a perfect pick because the guy is just... I love the aggressiveness out of him in the run game. He has a constant leg drive and is super aggressive. Some strong hands in there too. His quickness off the line into the second level is absolutely phenomenal. He takes good angles to pave the way for the running back and overall just showed the ability to drop his butt and anchor during the Senior Bowl week with an increased competition for him there. I mean, Cody Mauk is one of the best offensive line talents there in the 2023 NFL Draft and getting him at 39 would be an absolute absolute steal. I believe that he's possibly there because the online talent is pretty big, but Cody Mauk is a really good player that improves the offensive line immediately wherever you want to put him. I would probably put him at left guard as a Cody Whitehair replacement because he did not look that good last season. In the run game, he was solid. Pass pro looked absolutely horrible. With Cody Mauk, you get a nasty, great offensive lineman that can that can come in uh, right away, plug and play starter, is really good in pass pro, dominates in the run game, and then just with Tevin Jenkins on the other guard spot, can just dominate the league for years to come. An absolute incredible duo that would be, and it would be such an exciting pick for Ryan Poles and the Bears in round two. Staying with the second round, we now want to move on with the 54th pick overall. This is one of the original picks for the Bears. I think it was the one that they actually traded to the Ravens for Roquan Smith. So not really original one, but uh, they did not acquire that one in this typical mock draft here. So with the 54th overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Felix and a DK Uzama etch out of Kansas State. And 6'4", 255 on a DK Uzama is one of the better edge prospects in the entire NFL draft this coming, or in this year's draft class actually. And I think he would be a really fire pickup in the mid rounds of the second round. Overall, he's just a pure edge talent with great speed off the line. Already has good pass rush repertoire and can really beat tackles with several moves off the line. He's a very agile mover and has the ability to bend while rushing. I mean, speed to power is really great as well with him. And against the run, he's really solid as well. Is good at defending the gap. I mean, he struggled 
against some double teams. I have to give him that. So he could definitely improve as a run stuffer. But overall, he also sets the edge pretty well and is just a very sure tackler. And at 50, uh, 54, you get one of the better edge prospects in this entire draft. Overall, the edge class is very deep, so I don't see a problem with selecting one here at 54. After Jalen Carter at the fourth pick, you now get another defensive line prospect. A position of need for the Chicago Bears. Edge production was really bad last year with Felix and you DK Uzama, you get an edge player that can contribute right away for the defense and get to hunt right away and go uh, out for many, many sacks in the NFL. And I think he can really succeed at that. One heck of a player would be a dream pickup at number 54 here. So now moving on to round number three for the Chicago Bears in the 2023 NFL Draft. With the 64th overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Rasheed Rice, wide receiver SMU. And I was really debating here to go defensive line again just to stuff uh, the, uh, the trenches here once again or go offensive line. But I really thought about it and wide receiver is such a big need as well. And with Rasheed Rice still on the board potentially at 64, you get one of the better ones in the entire draft class. He stands at 6 foot, 200 pounds and overall just for his pros, a wide receiver with good speed and especially short area quickness. Looks really good overall in his routes. Has a nice release package already. Love that. Great ball skills. Catches almost everything uh, thrown his way and really just fights through contact love that his route running looks really good love his ability to cut on a dime and then also as soon as the ball is in his hands he has a really good yak ability can make some players miss at his size at his build that's really nice as well and then he's a pretty damn good blocker out on the perimeter as well so love that by him as for his cons i mean he had some some concentration drop issues. That's what I meant with catches almost everything. He had some drops, but I think he can really work it out with wide receiver coach Ty Tolbert. And then also he needs to expand his route tree in the NFL. It was mostly just curls and go routes at SMU. It was not really a expanded route tree yet. So it will be interesting how he adjusts to that. But at the Senior Bowl already showed some versatility with his routes. Looked good uh, in several routes. His breaks look clean. So I think overall he's a really good prospect with high High upside could definitely become a wide receiver one for the Chicago Bears in the future. Um, I mean, who knows? But overall, a really good talent, and I like him a lot. Rasheed Rice at 64 here to the Chicago Bears. And sticking in the third round, we now got the pick from the Indianapolis Colts, the 79th overall pick. And with that 79th overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears will select Blake Freeland. Offensive tackle, BYU. At 6'7", 312 pounds, Blake Freeland is one of the most intriguing prospects at the tackle spots in the entire draft class. Overall, I know we have Braxton Jones at left tackle, but we have a massive hole at right tackle, and that's what I love about Blake Freeland. He mostly played left tackle at BYU, but he showed at the Senior Bowl his versatility, played both tackle spots, and looked solid in both spots overall. I would definitely give Braxton Jones another year, potentially, or a shot at least, during training camp to secure that starting spot, but it's never bad to bring in competition, and like I said, Blake Freeland potentially could play right tackle as well. As overall for his pros, I mean, he's an amazing, amazing run blocker overall, constant leg drive, and 100% on every single play. He takes great angles in the second level, looks absolutely unstoppable on pull blocks, uh, good strong core and base overall as well, and just a lengthy athletic tackle with lots of upside. His ability to anchor was shown at the Senior Bowl week as well in pass pro and overall passed up the rush stunts by defenses with ease and recognized them fast. As for his cons, he still needs to work on his footwork. He's a bit sloppy at times with it and also in pass pro he needs to improve overall. But I think with Blake Freeland you get a very high upside, high ceiling tackle out of BYU at 6'7 who can immediately contribute in a run game and just absolutely dominate defenses. And then in 
in the pass pro we just need to work on it a little bit but he could be a instant plug and play starter at right tackle and would be an amazing pickup at pick number 79 for the Chicago Bears so now still in the third round we want to move on to the next pick and with the 93rd pick in the 2023 NFL draft the Chicago Bears select A.T. Perry wide receiver out of Wake Forest A.T. Perry is one of my favorite wide receiver prospects in this year's draft class. It's just a long wide receiver that moves way smoother than you actually think. Like his legs and feet are pretty quick. He stands at 6'3", 195 pounds and just got that perfect X receiver built. I love his release package already just like with uh, SMU wide receiver Rasheed Rice. A very underrated route runner with some good explosive breaks. Really showed out at the Shrine Bowl and routed up those uh, uh that, those dbs excuse me uh overall also great hands he can really go up and get it has some great body positioning and control there was a beautiful go route uh, at the shrine bowl on one-on-ones where he just separated at the uh, at the release point of the ball and just hauled it in just beautifully leaned into the db before that and just knows like i said how to position his body to win every single rep as for his cons i mean he had some drops and also is not really a elite speed prospect but I don't really care with him I mean the guy can separate he can go up and get it he's really smooth when the ball is in his hands and just stands at six foot three has a really good build I think A.T. Perry would be an absolute steal at 93 now will he be there at that position in the draft I don't know uh, it, it's a long shot, but A.T. Perry would be a dream pickup. And after Rasheed Rice, an absolute fire addition for Justin Fields and the 2023 Chicago Bears offense. So now we want to move on to round number four. And with the 114th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft acquired by the Carolina Panthers, the Chicago Bears select Luzagun Luvatimi, center out of Michigan. And Alou Watimi was one of the players that definitely stood out throughout the Senior Bowl week. I already talked about him, I think, in my uh, Senior Bowl video a couple of days ago. Overall, he stands at 6'2", 308 pounds, and is a center with good quickness out of his stance. He gets out to the second level quick with some good angles, some good blocking angles overall. He really just stonewalled the defensive lineman all week long at the Senior Bowl, showed that he can drop his butt and anchor, and really is a experienced player as well with 45 starts in his collegiate career that's just a center prospect for potentially years to come uh, you can pair Justin Fields with a like I said already kind of experienced center and they can work it out together I think center is a very important position hopefully Aluva Timi will potentially be there at 114 even but he's a really good prospect I like him a lot and he will be just a fire addition to the Chicago Bears offensive line after picking Blake Freeland potentially and Cody Malk as well so you're looking at a new young but already experienced offensive line that could all potentially start right away I think Oluwatimi will be a plug and play center as well over Sam Mustafer no doubt as for his cons I mean position versatility is obviously a big problem with centers at all the time but I think if you got a good one in Oluwatimi who can or it looks like a really smart player with big time awareness as well. I think that's definitely a pick worth making here in the fourth round. Also, he has somewhat of a smaller stature, so playing strength in the NFL is still a concern, but he looked good at the Senior Bowl, and then he just lacks elite athleticism. Like when he moves into the second level, you see that he's not really super fast, but he gets out there quick and has some good angles, so I think he can really uh, work with that nonetheless. Moving on in the draft with the 137th overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Jose Ramirez, edge out of Eastern Michigan. With Jose Ramirez, the Bears would absolutely land a steal later in the draft. He's just a rusher with good speed and athleticism overall, a great first step, 
already a good pass rush repertoire and overall also very good and strong hands. He's a agile rusher who was the MAC Defensive Player of the Year, who looked absolutely outstanding at Eastern Michigan. He stands at six foot one, two hundred and forty nine pounds, and for his only cons, it's probably right now competition. It's a question, but he bow balled out at the Shrine Bowl weekend against much better competition as well. I mean, he can just dip and rip all day long, really fast off the edge. He would be a great steal later in the draft that could have some production early on in his career even uh, for the 137th overall pick in the draft and I think he would be a great addition to the Bears edge rotation. I think with him and then Felix DK Uzama and then also just uh, factoring in Jalen Carter as well and then from last year Dominique Robinson, Travis Gibson and then potentially some additions through free agency as well. I think you can build up a better defensive line within one offseason and Jose Ramirez would be a definite big time contributor uh, in that fact as well. Moving on later in the draft round number five with the 150th pick in the 2023 NFL draft the Chicago Bears will select Yvonne Pace Jr. linebacker out of Cincinnati. As for his pros overall, the linebacker is just a player that gives 100% every single play. I love that. He kind of reminds me of Rodrigo, the linebacker for the Lions, he was also kind of undersized. Uh, pace at 5'10", 231 pounds is definitely an undersized player, but just gives 100% every single play. He's a fast linebacker with tons of pass rush ability, which is great as well. I think he had 10 sacks last year for Cincinnati. He just destroyed the running backs and the rush drills at the Senior Bowl, and the same for the coverage drills. Looked very fluid in his movements. As for his cons, I mean, obviously, like I already said, size and length is a concern, and he also had some tr- trouble fighting off blocks when engaged with Lyman, but he also kind of threw that out of the window with a big time play in the run game uh, against Osiris Torrance, a surefire first round pick in this year's draft, where he just absolutely hit sticked him and put him on the ground. I mean, a player that, like I said, gives 100% every play, tough player who tackles well and would be just a great addition to a very young, still very young, linebacking core of the Bears, but he would be a very nice addition and with potentially one to two more moves and free agency bringing in veterans, he could develop into a very good player uh, within the Bears' future. So now moving on into round six of the 2023 NFL Draft with the 178th overall pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears will select Will Mallory, tight end out of Miami. At 6'4", 239 pounds, Mallory is just overall a good blocking tight end that can block well in the run game as well as in the pass game. I really love what I saw on tape on screens. He looked very fluid and had some good leg drive on all of those plays. Overall, also a tight end with some good and secure hands, solid body control and placement as well. He places his body in some good positions and then overall does all the dirty work on the field. The Bears desperately need some tight end depth behind Cole Komet. I think with Mallory, you can get a very solid tight end later in a draft where tight ends are really a luxury as well. As for his cons, he is limited uh, athletically wise, but he will not make and he will not make uh, where he's not a mismatch in the NFL to any linebacker or cornerback, but he will be a solid depth piece, like I said, to any offense in the NFL, and we desperately need that. And with Will Mallory, I think you get a very solid player where you can play two or even three tight end sets with, and I wouldn't mind that pick at 178 at all. All as for the 199th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, still in round six, the Chicago Bears select Demario Douglas, wide receiver out of Liberty. (music) 
The Chicago Bears go once again with a wide receiver, the third one in this year's draft. And Demero Douglas is definitely one of the most fun players that you could watch during the Shrine Bowl weekend. He stands at 5'7", 175 pounds. So just to get the cons out of the way, obviously his size and weight will limit him into the slot probably right away in the NFL and it will probably cause him some problems. So he definitely needs to work with the NFL uh, strength and conditioning program first of all because uh, before he will probably be totally play ready. But for his pros, I mean the guy's incredibly quick with amazing short area movements. He has great releases and overall a really good release package where he just routed up everyone, like I said, at the Shrine Bowl. Uh, he also displays versatility with his return game ability as well. Had some good hands all week long at the Shrine Bowl. The separation at the top of the route looked absolutely phenomenal, and he will force DBs to flip his hips and can absolutely destroy him. And also, as soon as the ball is in his hands, he's a very agile and shifty runner as well. I think in the sixth round, 199, you cannot complain about having a guy like Demario Douglas on the board. You take him, you plug him in and into your offense. You maybe will get some competition in with Bellis Jones Jr., who looked better in the return game later in the year. But Demario Douglas, also a very, very explosive player that you can put back there. And then just as a route runner, like I said, really good route runner, can be a security target for Justin Fields early on, just separating on some witch routes, some, some quick little slants, whatever it is. But he looked phenomenal at the shrine. Bowl, and I absolutely would love this pickup in round six for the Chicago Bears to round out their wide receiving core. And that last wide receiver pick already leads us to the last pick for the Chicago Bears in the 2023 NFL Draft, now in round number 7. And with the 220th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears will select Cameron Young, defensive lineman out of Mississippi State. At 6'3", 304 pounds, Cameron Young is one of the better run stuffers in the entire draft class. Overall, he's projected to be a nose tackle in the league, and he just holds the line really well and defends the gaps really nicely as well. Overall, he has good core strength and he can take on double teams and pave the way for linebackers to make the tackle he's powerful strong against the run but for his cons I mean he's no real big threat as a pass rusher his quickness off the line and explosiveness is just simply not there so he will be limited in his role but we're talking about round seven in those rounds you always look for one to two things that those guys can do well and what Cameron Young does so well is just stuff in the run and that's something we desperately need as as well we need bodies at the defensive line so with him in round seven at pick number 220 I think you will get a really good player that can do one thing well which is stuffing the run and I think with that pick you can round up a very successful 2023 NFL draft for the Chicago Bears so with that last pick the 2023 NFL draft or my mock draft 1.0 for the Bears is officially finished we trade it down twice with the Colts with that number one overall pick and then that pick acquired from the Colts that number 35 overall pick we traded down again with the Carolina Panthers as for the picks overall with pick number four we selected Jalen Carter defensive lineman out of Georgia then we picked Cody Mauk interior offensive lineman North Dakota State 54th overall pick Felix and DK Uzama you get some wide receiver help at pick number 64 with Rasheed Rice 79th overall pick we picked Blake Freeland, offensive tackle BYU, then also added another playmaker at wide receiver at pick number 93 in A.T. Perry out of Wake Forest. Then with the 114th overall pick, we've selected Luzagun Oluwatimi, center out of Michigan. Jose Ramirez was the selection at pick number 137 out of Eastern Michigan. With pick number 150, we get some linebacker help with Ivan Pace Jr. And then with 178, some tight end depth with Will Mallory out of Miami. And we finished off the draft with 199th overall pick, Demario Douglas, wide receiver out of Liberty. And round 7, Cam. Cameron Young, defensive lineman out of Mississippi State. So overall, I think it's a really 
where that would be a really good draft for me personally overall as obviously a Bears fan you add lots of trench players you get stronger on the offensive line you get stronger on the defensive line you add three playmaking wide receivers in the draft as well as weapons for Justin Fields you add some to the linebacking room you add some to the tight end depth and overall I think you would be really happy as a Bears fan with this draft overall but with that being said that's already the end of the video guys I hope you've enjoyed it definitely let me know in the comments down below what you think of my mock draft 1.0 did you like it or did you not like it and what would you have done different like and subscribe if you liked the video check out Instagram and Twitter if you want to as well and as always guys bear down